Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 level design essential series. In today's video we are going to be taking a quick look at post-processing inside of Unreal Engine 4. Now for those of you that don't know what post-processing is, it is essentially the process of applying effects after the production of your image or your scene. If you take a look at this image that I've got on the screen here, we have got two identical images. However, we've got some camera effects on top of that, which is going to make it look a little bit different. So on the left hand side, you can see the original, the before image. And with this, it's just a standard image. And that's sort of what your scene is looking like at the moment, it's quite dull. Whereas in the after, you can see they have increased the contrast on there. They have added some extra purple into the scene. They have upped the oranges and a few other settings and they're doing this to make it look really nice to make the colors pop and that is something that you can do inside of Unreal Engine 4. And the way that we're going to do that is using a post processing volume and that's just going to apply all of those effects in real time on top of your camera. So the way you're going to do this is by going to the volumes and then post processing. Now in today's video we're just going to be going over some of the effects. There is going to be hundreds of effects available to us for post processing and all of them do different things. Now having said that I am going to be dedicating an entire series to post processing and once that is available you will be able to find the link for that in the description below. But anyway, we are going to be going over the important stuff to quickly change up the look and the style of our scene. So with this volume that we've just created, drag it into our scene and what you need to do to make this work is this volume is going to define which areas are going to have that post-processing volume applied to it. At the moment it's quite small, so what I need to do is if you're just going to have a few of these, so different post-processing effects for different levels, just scale it up and move them around. However, if you go to the post-process volume settings in the details panel, you can check infinite extent unbound. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it cover the whole of the world because you want the whole level to have the same post-processing settings. If you're going to have more than one different area with these different effects, then just make sure that's not ticked and just place different volumes around in your scene. So with this in our level then, let's go over some of the quick settings that we can use to do this. So Unbound is all the way down there at the bottom. Just scroll up to the top and we'll go through some of the main stuff. Now, the ones that I want to go over specifically in today's video is our global settings. And probably one of the most important ones that you can work with is your scene color tint. Now, by default, all of your post-processing effects are going to be unchecked. So just check the ones that you want and then you just apply the different changes to each of these. So the scene color is essentially like a layer of film on top of your scene. So if I go ahead and click this white strip, I can then use the different colors to give my scene a different look and style. So if I want to give this a few more purples, sort of similar to what they did before, you could do that. You can make it more green if you want it to be sort of like an alien land. If you want to make it more cool, uh, and cold looking, you could add some blues, but that is something that is up for you guys to play around with. Now what you don't want to do is sort of go really strong like this all the way up with the saturation up really high because it's going to make it look unrealistic. Try and stay near the whites, similar to this just like I have done, sort of about halfway, but realistically you've got to play around with this value based on the look and the style that you are after. With this, I'm just gonna press OK and it's going to stay there. We can play around with some other settings, for example, our saturation. So if we check this, we could then play around with the RGB values or the hue, saturation, and value, uh, value options. So with RGB, you can just 
take away from the reds, you can take away from the greens and the blues and add it just playing around with these sliders. So for example, if I wanted to add more blue on the blue, I would move this to the right and you can see the blues in my scene now are gonna become a little bit more pronounced. And you can see those a little better and it does look quite nice. And you can do the same with the greens, you could add more to that, it's up to you. You've just gotta play around with these sliders. At the bottom here, we have your luminance, which is sort of how bright those colors are going to be shining. If you turn this up a bit too much, it's suddenly gonna become really unrealistic. So I generally like to have this about 1.1 and that's gonna make the colors pop without taking away from the realism in our scene. So moving away from the saturation, we've also got our contrast. And with this, you can just play around with the contrast values. So do you want your reds to stick out more, your greens, your blues, and you can also change the luminance as well. Um, but this is something that you are going to get used to as you use it more often as you experiment with it. Now, like I said, there is loads and loads of different settings that you can play around with, but as you saw there, just by playing around with the scene color tint, the saturation and the contrast, you can get a whole different look to your scene. If we look at the scene now, you can see it's got this kind of cool fantasy kind of look and style that I'm really digging. And you can see just how quickly was able to change that look. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just delete my post-processing volume and you can see just how different it is. If I press Ctrl Z to bring it back, you can see the difference between the two. So you as a level designer are going to have a bit more control over the look and the style of your scene using post-processing. Anyway guys, I am going to end the video here. Experiment with all the stuff and if you are interested in that dedicated, to, uh, dedicated series to post-processing, let me know in the description and I will get it linked in there for you guys. Anyway, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.